Hello everyone, my name is Han Ling. I'm from the Human Rights Center of the University of Padua. In this unit, we will talk about the EU as a global player. In the first two episodes, I will introduce the concept of the normative power and then the challenges to Europe as a normative power. The creative efforts of the European integration process since the end of the Second World War made the EU unique in the world politics. It's a hybrid polity consisting of supranational and international forms of governance without a self-sufficient military force. But still, the EU has played and will continue to play a significant role in the world, together with other superpowers with military impacts. So, scholars like Ian Manner suggested that the EU should be considered beyond the narrow confines of military versus civilian power. A more accurate characterization of the EU in international politics would be that it is a normative power. According to Manners, the central component of the normative power is that the EU exists as being different to pre-existing political forms, and this particularity predisposes it to act in a normative way. In addition, it has the ability to reshape the concept of normal in international relations. In the EU's normative power, uh, derives from three sources. Historical context, that is a legacy of two destructive world wars. Hybrid polity, which refers to the features of the Union as a post-Westphalian order with supranational and international institutions. And finally, the political legal constitutionalism, that is the elite-driven and treaty-based legal nature of the EU. These three features of the Union helped bring the common principles of the member states under the same framework and facilitated commitment to principles and norms at the supranational and the national levels. That is to say, the policies and the decisions of the European Union and its institutions are not guided exclusively by regional interests of geopolitical nature. More importantly, they are guided by the founding treaties based on common principles and values. So, the EU builds its power and greater legitimacy upon these fundamental norms, both internally and internationally. It acts in accordance with and pursues the promotion of the core values through its foreign policy. In brief, three elements characterize the normative power Europe. First, acting in a normative way. Second, capacity of introducing new norms that reshape international relations. And finally, the norms are based on fundamental principles and core values rather than merely interests of certain states. The EU's foreign policy differs in many respects from that of the other great powers. For example, it promotes democracy uh, through enlargement and accession, as well as neighborhood and development policies. It has helped to spread consensual demo uh, democracy into Central and Eastern Europe as part of the transition and accession processes. It has also introduced human rights clauses in trade agreements, emphasizes regional cooperation, and promotes a multilateral system based on the UN framework. In its relations with the wider world, the EU shall uphold and promote its values and interests and contribute to the protection of its citizens. As Article 3 of the Treaty on European Union illustrates, the Union's aim is to promote peace, its values, and the well-being of its peoples. Then, what are the common values and principles that guide the EU's foreign policy? According to Article 21 of the Treaty on European Union, the EU's action on the international scene shall be guided by the principles which have inspired its own creation, development, and enlargement, and which it seeks to advance in the wider world. They are democracy, the rule of law, the universality and indivisibility of human rights and fundamental freedoms, respect for human dignity, the principle of equality and solidarity, and respect for principles of the United Nations Charter and human rights and international law. However, it's not sufficient to assume that acting in accordance with normative convictions is necessarily a good thing. For some, 
It may be a paradox that the continent which once ruled the world through the physical impositions of imperialism is now coming to set world standards in normative terms. We also need to know whether this leads the EU to do the right thing from a principled point of view and whether it is the right thing to do in a particular context or situation.